Fine day for chewing the cud. Mm. Oh, mow me down and call me an haystack. A G were you, a D were dip. A were our, T were E were our, M were M were O, and M were Don't talk your own language, eh? <laughs> You're even more ignorant nor what I am. My, but you're ugly. Uh, make a good wife, though, I shouldn't be surprised. I'm asking you to marry me, you dumb dockerhead. Why don't you answer? You'd marry me soon enough I knocked your head off your shoulders. Now give me an answer, you stock of papers. Are you gonna be my ever-loving wife or no? Right here, then. You've asked for it. Off comes your head. Uh, I, I didn't mean it, ma'am. It just was those little jokes. <laughs> uh, the when I says Wurzel, that isn't my name at all. He wasn't here. Never has been here before. So don't you go saying I am, or I'm not Chitang Dada. That's better, my dear. Thank you so much for the eggs, Mrs. Braithwaite. What would I do without you? We'll buy them from the shop, I suppose. <laughs> but they're not nearly so good as free eggs. I, I mean, uh, free-range eggs. Right, I shall expect your visitors for tea tomorrow afternoon. And they'll be there all right. The kiddies are quite looking forward to it. Ah, Mr. Peters, it's all arranged. Tea at the hall tomorrow, four o'clock sharp. Oh, tomorrow. Well, I did promise... Now, to... now. I know your time is your own, so I shan't take no for an answer. And uh, I hear you're very good with electrical work. Oh, yes. Anything in that line. Repairs, rewiring. How very kind of you to offer. Until tomorrow, then. And uh, don't forget your toolbox. <laughs> Humphrey? <laughs> Excuse me. A fine morning, ma'am. You're the scarecrow man, aren't you? Uh -huh. I want you to come up to the hall and make one for me. With the greatest of pleasure, ma'am, but I didn't know you had crops up at the hall. Crops? Of course we don't have any crops. No, I want it for my lawn. I thought it would look very decorative, very rural. Oh, I'm afraid my scarecrows don't make very good ornaments, ma'am. Wouldn't you feel happy with a nice little garden gnome? A gnome? We're talking about the hall, not a semi-detached bungalow. And incidentally, while you're up there, there are a few odd jobs I would like you to do, you know, cleaning gutters and glazing and so on. Ah, uh, now I know the very man to recommend for mending gutters. Oh, but I want you to do it. I mean, you are a workman, aren't you? A craftsman, ma'am. Same thing. But of course, if you don't want to make a scarecrow for me. Oh, but I do, ma'am. It's my life. As soon as possible, then. <laughs> I'm well, I don't rightly know. Mr. Braithwaite's to market and he didn't leave no instructions. He usually likes me to do a little renovation. If you don't keep your scarecrows up to scratch, they fall to pieces, you know. Time it did fall to pieces. He keeps saying he'll throw it on the bonfire and get one of them electric rook scarers. Oh, not the same, Mrs. Braithwaite. Not the same at all. No, I wish you'd let me do a little patching of it. It's been sadly neglected. Oh, just this once then, but nothing fancy, mind. Good money thrown after bad, if you ask me. Huh? You're the crumb one, aren't you? I am. Did you make Wurzel Gummidge? 
Oh, you know his name, do you? You're privileged, not many do. Do all scarecrows have names? Indeed they do. Wurzel Gummidge, Soggy Boggart, Earthy Mangold, Scary Tater, Anna Arrow. And can they all walk and talk? Walk and talk? What makes you think scarecrows can walk and talk? Uh, we didn't. It was, well, you know, just a story we heard. A uh, story. The countryside is chock-a-block with stories. Now, my young friends, if scarecrows walk and talk, they do it only by themselves, by the light of the moon, when all the world's asleep. Ah. I knew he wasn't supposed to talk to humans. You've got him into trouble now. I like that. You're the one who blabbed his name. And you're the one who blabbed he could walk and talk. I never. I just asked if he could. Oh, shut up. Come on. <sighs> Colonel, Colonel, what's the matter, Wurzel? Oh, Colonel. 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 Oh,
Well, I think that'll last another winter. Back on duty, world. Uh, sir, thank you, Mr. Crowman, sir. You're an honor, sir. Did he tick you off, Wurzel? I bet he did. That's why he's sulking. Come on, he'll be like that for hours. Oi! I ain't sulking. I just ain't speaking. Especially to a couple of telltale tits like you. We didn't mean to tell on you, Wurzel. Honest. What's honest when it's a dog? Oh, well, no matter. You want to know what the crow man said, I'll tell you. He's making me a new answer, mate. And that's more than all we'll ever do for you two. <laughs> so go on, shove off. I'm busy. I got some thinking to do. Only trouble is, I can't think until I got me thinking there, Don. <laughs> that's better. Now I can get some proper thinking done. Now then. Which edge should I take to the crow man? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Eeny, do give the children a cucumber sandwich. I'm sure they must be ravenous. So kind of you to help me out, Mr. Peters. It's a fiddling little job, I know, but uh, not worth calling in a professional firm. <laughs> Think nothing of it, Mr. Bloomsbury Barton. Because uh, I could manage it on my own, but it would be better with another pair of hands. You see, I need someone to feed the wire up to the picture rail at the far end of the room. Shall I help, Dad? I don't know what. Take your shoes off and stand on that table. Stand on one of my best tables? Certainly not. Enid, go to the potting shed and ask that peculiar man to come and give Mr. Peters a hand. Oh, what peculiar man, madam? The scarecrow man. Tell him to come here at once. Yes, madam. And get down, young man! Excuse me, are you the scarecrow, ma'am? Oh, that I am, missy. Any time you want any rook scaring and can pay me wages, you just calls on me. Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton wants to see you. She's having tea in the drawing room. Tea, eh? Uh, I can do with some of that. Uh, tell her I'm coming just as soon as I've changed me head. Come in, Wurzel. Good afternoon, Wurzel. Uh, good afternoon, sir, Mr. Cromat, sir. Uh, and I brought me Ed as promised. <laughs> well, I didn't think you'd come without it, Wurzel. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to find your way here, would you? <laughs> uh, begging your lordship's pardon, uh, what I mean is that I brought the exchange yet. Ah, I see. Well, let's have a look at it. It's what I call my arithmetic head, sir. Oh. <laughs> Although I haven't got much call for arithmetic these days. I mean, a bird has two legs and a sheep has four legs. It's about all the arithmetic the scarecrow needs these days. Isn't that right, Mr. Cromancer? And what do you call that one you've got on? It's me thinking head, sir. And what are you going to do with your thinking head when I've given you your answer, maybe, eh? Oh, me thinking head, I hadn't thought of that, sir. <laughs> well, never mind, Wurzel. Two heads are better than one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're right there, Mr. Yeah. Crowman. <laughs> what on earth can be keeping the man? Really, one can rely on no one these days. Yes, do take the last feast of cake, child. <laughs> There's plenty more in the shops. Now, Wurzel, the time has come. <laughs> now, now, Wurzel, you know it doesn't hurt. <laughs> hundreds of times. <laughs> one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> Ah. Ah. Careful. Not to muddle your arithmetic head with your thinking head. And now, Wurzel, we are handsome head. Oh, at long last. Come in! <laughs> the scarecrow person, madam. What on earth can be wrong with a stupid girl? A very well show him in. <laughs> this way, sir. I knew no. <laughs> Joe, what's your manners? And who on earth might you be, pray? Uh, a scarecrow, man, ma'am. A come from a tea. You must be the crowman's assistant. 
Very well, there'll be tea for you in the kitchen after you've helped Miss Peters. <laughs> no, you'd rather come over here, sir. Have <laughs> you going to take all that piece of flex and lead it up to the friction rail, please? Flex? Flex of what? I don't see no flex. <laughs> this piece of wire? No, that's electric. Uh, no, can't be doing with electric. Uh, sets the body on fire, so it does. I can't touch electric. It's all right, it isn't live. No, no, sorry, can't touch electric. That'll do, my man. You are here to follow Mr. Peter's instructions. Uh, no, not with electric. Uh, so, uh, I think I'll just sit down uh, and have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peters, can't you do something? Here, John, ask the gentleman to hold this. I'm just going to make a connection. <laughs> I suppose I should have warned you, Wurzel. Being handsome ain't quite as simple as you think. Thanks, some Thanks. Oh, take those teeth out, Wurzel. They're not one of my better efforts. Thank you, sir. Ain't simple, and that's a fatness of chromance. Well, what went wrong is what I'd like to know. And there is I with the most handsome men in, in the old county, and everybody still hates me. Member doesn't hate me, laughs and laughs. Same as they did when I was still ugly. Well, shall I tell you what went wrong? It was electric, Mr. Croman, sir. If it hadn't been for that there electric, frightening the body out of his wits, they'd have been all over me, sir. What an handsome man they'd have said. Why didn't he come in and sit down? Have a cup of tea and a slice of cake. It wasn't the electrics, Wurzel. It was you. You went upsetting people again, didn't you? What, me, sir? Me, Mr. Cr oh, Wurzel, sir. I, I couldn't upset anybody, sir. How could I do that with, when I've got such an handsome head? Wurzel, an handsome head is not enough. You have to be handsome inside. Yeah, well, I ain't handsome inside as well, you know, as Mr. Cromancer. All I has inside is some twigs and straw and a pesky robin's nest. So, if it ain't too much trouble, Your Majesty, could your Iron Mightiness give me an handsome inside to go with me handsome head? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that, Wurzel. You have to do that for yourself. I'm only a poor, stupid old scarecrow, sir. You are what you want to be, Wurzel. We all are what we want to be. And if you want a handsome inside, you can. Be kind and thoughtful and generous, and people be kind and thoughtful to you. Well, then, sir, would people be kind to old Wurzel? Well, not all of them, but some of them. Oh. And could I get me a wife? Only if you're handsome inside. Uh, don't forget your thinking, Ed Wurzel. You might need it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Your Holiness. And thank you once again, Your Eminence. Thank you, sir. Handsome inside. Good afternoon. Oh. Hey, you stupid little... Nice shot, little man. Yeah. Oh. There we are. Thank you very much, young man. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you. You stupid godolid! Safe journey. What do you say, children? Thank you very much, Mrs. Bloomsley Barton. Not at all. It's a pleasure to see young appetites at work. <laughs> and thank you, Mr. Peters. I'm sorry you had so much trouble, but you managed very well in the end, <laughs> more or less. Oh! Oh, it's you. I hope you've seen that assistant of yours off the premises. I have never come across such insolence in my life. Uh, don't worry, I've sent him packing, ma'am. Now, if you care to 
inspect your decorative scarecrow. Oh, I most certainly would. <laughs> Oh, that's not what I had in mind at all. Not decorative enough, ma'am? Not decorative at all. I mean, look at its head. Quite frankly, I've never seen anything so repulsive. Ah, but that's only a temporary head, Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton. When it's quite finished, it'll have a really handsome head. And when am I to see this amazing handsome head? Very soon, I should think, ma'am. Very soon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, first off, I I've come to humbly beg your pardon for what I said to you this morning. <laughs> uh, that was before I was handsome inside, it was. And I didn't mean it when I said I'd knock your head off. <laughs> uh, second, I I've brought you these flowers. <laughs> uh, and, and you can have them for nothing. Uh, I'm giving, giving you these flowers because I want you to be my wife, is it? I want you to know that you're the most handsome scarecrow I've ever seen. <laughs> as handsome as me, so you are. <laughs> and I'm asking you to marry me. Uh, if you've got life in you, same as me. So if, if you've got life in you, and you, you want to, to be my loving wife, would you nod your beautiful head? to learn by your own mistakes. And you have. I think you'd better have your thinking head on again. Oh, thank you, Your Eminence. I'm very sorry. It won't happen again. From now on, I'm staying single. Yeah. 